So this will be a review of my Android MK808 Mini TV with the dual core A9 processor. So when my device originally came it was loaded with Android 4.2.2 um, I went and changed over to the finless ROM, which seems to run a whole lot smoother. Uh, runs a lot better, and it gives you root access to the device. But uh, this is the boot up screen, and as you can see, the device itself is plugged into the HDMI input on the TV, and the power is being drawn from the USB cable on the TV. Uh, sorry about the little scraping there. Uh, kind of difficult to get around. But, cheap little device. I think the device cost me about $50. And then, added to that, I uh, grabbed this nice little Logitech keyboard with a trackpad, which makes setting on the couch and operating the device much easier. So when it first boots up, it does take about two or three minutes to come up to, uh, it's usable now, but in two or three minutes, everything will be loaded and it uh, runs a whole lot better after that. So I'm gonna pause the video and I'll be back as soon as everything's up and running and smooth. Okay, it's been, uh, been about a minute. Everything's up and running and you can see I'm at the home screen. Uh, I just have a generic background, a uh, little widget running here to show the current weather, the time, the forecast, uh, some of the apps that run on here. Uh, of course, you have uh, the Google Music service. I pull it up and just play something real quick here. Runs real well. No issues with that at all. Um, straight out of the box, that's not an issue. Uh, some of the, of course, you've got uh, Netflix and Hulu. I'll pull up Netflix here real quick and uh, play some video, which is the main purpose I bought this for, was to be able to play Netflix, Hulu, online streaming, and uh, XBMC, which I'll get into here in just just a minute. Um, load this up and let it stream for a second. Of course, when it comes to Netflix and things like that, you're always at the mercy of your ISP and Netflix and everybody else out there on the internet, so um, usually doesn't take this long to load, but uh, there it is. Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull a different video. That one's playing in uh, low definition. So it does play well. Uh, Netflix works well. Uh, Hulu, you'd see similar playback. Here I have a few things loaded so I can read the news as I'm sitting back on the couch. Uh, it's your standard Android interface that you're used to probably looking at on your phone. So you can have a couple different screens and swipe back and forth between the screens. Back to the home screen here, and I'll load up uh, XBMC. 
Now, XBMC for Android is uh, a different critter altogether. Uh, there's actually a special uh, XBMC port or program uh, just for this MK808 uh, Android device. But I'm going to load up, uh, well, one th couple things that this does is it's optimized for the device. Um, and then you go in and, in and do some configuration changes because you want it, uh, the video player that comes in XBMC isn't exactly the best uh, video player. Uh, and you actually want to get it configured so that your videos open as a default in uh, M player. Go in here and we'll play some 720p video. And this will take a second to cache up all the, the available videos. And Let's pull, uh, we'll pull up this British, America's, or Britain's Got More Talent. And it'll uh, take a second here to get loaded up. And then it will play in uh, the M player and play in full high def 720p video. Yeah, we'll back up here. I'll load another video just to see if I can find something a little more, uh, a little more video intensive, or something we're a little more used to seeing. Um, yeah, that was a dead link. Tried to pull up a baseball game. Uh, here we'll pull up a, a National Geographic show. You can see it plays real well. So, uh, just close this up real quick. But it is your standard Android, and it plays well. It does the video. Uh, of course, you get all the Android applications, the games, uh, pretty much anything you could do on a standard Android phone, you could do on this. But only instead of being on the little tiny screen, it displays on your big screen. Uh, again, I have less than, oh, I probably have about $80 total invested in the whole thing, uh, minus the TV. It was about $50 for the device, and then I spent another $30 on the, the wireless keyboard. But uh, all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. It did take a little bit of work to get it configured and get everything working and streaming properly. But uh, all in all, uh, it replaced that machine down there that I was using for streaming video to the TV and ended up in that small device right there. Uh, the power considerations, instead of running a 400 watt power supply in the computer, 
uh, it simply pulls the power USB off the TV and uh, doesn't uh, add to the heat in the room. Anybody that runs a computer knows how much heat they can generate. And it, uh, it does a, a nice job for the money. So, again, that's the MK4, or excuse me, the MK808 A9 dual-core processor uh, TV stick.